This maxillary central incisor is endodontically failing. Note we have a porcelain fused to metal crown, what appears to be a cast gold post. We have some dead space and we have a silver point in the apical one third. In this show, I'm going to describe how to remove this post using the post removal system. The provisionalized porcelain fused to metal crown was removed with the Winman pliers. So with a little bit of experience, we immediately realize we need to reduce the coronal aspect of this cast gold post. And by reducing it, we want to make sure we set it up so that its final dimensions are not smaller than the trephins that will be used to grab it and form a purchase for extraction. We can vibrate on a core for a very long time and we won't make any progress. Dome the head of the post with the transmetal burr. By rounding the head of the post, it will facilitate all subsequent clinical steps. It's important to recognize in machine shops around the world they use oil to reduce heat and also to keep their cutting tools sharper longer. So it is in clinical endodontics when we're using metal on metal, we need to use something like a viscous chelator, glide, RC prep, or prolube, and we can simply put a little bead on the top of the post. There are five trephins and their internal diameter ranges from 0.6 tenths of a millimeter to 1.6 millimeters. Select the largest trephin that won't passively go over the post. And we're going to start machining down the post. It's important to use PEC drilling because when we drill metal on metal, we'll start to lose our RPMs and we'll generate quite a bit of heat. So by lifting the instrument up periodically, you allow the flutes of its cutting blades to clear of metal chips. You let the post head cool a little bit because we use the viscous chelator to help lubricate and facilitate the machining process. And also as we peck drill, we need to reduce this about three millimeters ideally. Sometimes two is sufficient, but three is optimal. Whichever trephin we use to machine down the post, we would use typically the correspondingly sized tubular tap. A protective bumper is inserted over the distal end of the tubular tap because once we begin to generate the removal loads, we want to cushion the tooth and protect it from fracture. It is important to note that all the tubular taps have a reverse screw thread pattern. This means to insert the tubular tap and to draw it down, we must use short counterclockwise rotational strokes. The tubular tap will wobble a little bit, but then it begins to firm up as it begins to form threads on the cast gold metal. Once the tubular tap has been fully seated, we can push down the protective bumper. At times we will slit the protective bumper with scissors or a scalpel to place on a second or third one so we clear the incisal edges of the adjacent teeth. The extracting plier is mounted and we turn the screw knob clockwise to progressively separate the jaws of the plier. Oftentimes, as we're turning the screw knob, it will become very difficult, if not impossible, to turn. Research has shown just hesitate and let that steady pressure build up to facilitate breaking the bonds and this can be facilitated potently with indirect ultrasonics. In this method, the assistant can hold the ultrasonic Pro Ultra Indo 1 tip on the engaged tap and send a powerful wave of piezoelectric energy through the tap down into the engaged post. Oftentimes, you'll notice the screw knob that wouldn't turn now begins to turn quite readily. Well, we can jack most posts right up and out of the canal. And you can look at this post and see that it was placed with panavia cement. Notice when we use a clockwise rotation to remove the tap, we only formed about two or three threads. This shows the power of the purchase that this system can give you when trying to attach itself to a post. Well, once the post is out, there are the subsequent retreatment efforts removing the more apical portion of the silver point. And of course, once the silver points out, we can reshape the canal, 
Shaping will facilitate us cleaning. Warm gutta percha will facilitate obturation. And here, if you look at the one year recall, you can see the new restoration, a new cast post, a porcelain fused to metal crown, and great osseous healing. Let's review how to remove a cast core and post. Oftentimes, it will be necessary to use a transmetal burr to machine down the head of the post so that the post is more post-like. Once we have machined down the head of the cast gold core, we can use the appropriately sized trephin. Always use the biggest trephin that won't passively go over the head of the prepared post. Use peck drilling and use 15,000 RPMs in a high torque, slow speed latch type handpiece and we can expose optimally up to three millimeters of the head of the post. Select the correspondingly sized tubular tap by inserting first the protective bumper over its distal end. Remember to use a counterclockwise short rotational stroke to begin to seat and pull down the tap over the head of the post. Once the tubular tap is fully seated and secure, we can mount up the extracting plier. Be sure to use more protective bumpers if you need to to protect the incisal edges of the adjacent teeth. If we can't turn the screw knob, remember a potent adjunct to post removal is to use indirect ultrasonics. In this show, I have shown you a mechanical way to remove a post. Clearly, ultrasonic energy is our number one offense. But internationally, thousands of posts have been removed using the post removal system when ultrasonics failed.